our attacker starts up a, a conversation with this person and follows this person as they sit down at a workstation and enter their password into the jump host. Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Ginter with Waterfall Security Solutions and this is the Industrial Security Institute with the top 20 cyber attacks on industrial control systems. In this series, we are using the top 20 attacks to compare the strength of two different security postures at a hypothetical water treatment plant. One security posture is sort of vintage 2013 classic software-based security, sort of one of everything intrusion detection systems, layers of firewalls, antivirus systems, security updates, encryption, classic software security from that generation of advice. The second security program is the same system with one change. We have replaced the ITOT firewall with a unidirectional security gateway as the sole interface between the IT network and the industrial control system. For each of these attacks, we're going to ask the question, does a given defensive posture reliably defeat the attack? Today's episode is episode two. Our attack is an IT insider shoulder surfing passwords. So here's the scenario. Um, an IT insider is someone who has an account at, let's say, the Waterworks head office. This is someone who has an account, who has a, uh, a password, who logs in routinely. This might be a manager, it might be an accountant, it might be the receptionist. Here's the scenario. Um, someone from the Waterworks site, let's say a technician, uh, comes by the head office and our attacker starts up a, a conversation with this person and follows this person as they sit down at a workstation and enter their password into the jump host between the IT network and the control network log into the control network and do things to the control network from the IT network from the head office. Our attacker makes a note of the password that he or she saw the technician enter into the computer or the laptop on the way into the jump host. Sometime later, the technician has left. Our attacker sits down, connects to the jump host from their own computer, enters the password, and logs into the jump host. Once this attacker is inside the jump host, they look around and they find, let's say, the HMI software that is running on the jump host. There's a copy of it on the jump host. Brings up screens and wanders around more or less at random because this person doesn't really understand the physical process, doesn't understand the HMI, brings up screens more or less at random and changes things. What's the consequence? Well, we might just see confused people in the, in the, the waterworks plant going, what's going on here? We might see a partial shutdown. The consequence of this kind of attack is at least going to be a review of all of the screens and all of the settings on all of the, uh, all of the devices once this attack is discovered. Because we're going to have to make sure that uh, nothing is left over from the attack once the attacker is gone that is going to confuse things or make a mess of things in the future. So does the 2013 vintage software-based security system reliably defeat this attack? Yes, it does. Because if we remember, this security system, the software-based security system, is using all of the relevant best practices for the entire industrial control system. And multi-factor authentication is a best practice for the jump host. And so, when our attacker stole the password and tried to log back into the jump host, the stolen password would not do them any good because they don't have the RSA dongle or the fingerprint or the, the cell phone is used nowadays as a multi-factor authentication device uh, increasingly frequently. The attack scenario is not that the attacker stole the device and entered the password. The attack is the attacker watched the password, entered it, and got in. That doesn't work when multi-factor authentication is protecting the jump host. You might say, but the IT insider could have stolen the cell phone, um, could have uh, you know, gone on the dark web for that matter and paid a large sum of money and bought a, 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 you know, a powerful attack tool that exploited a zero day in the, in the jump host operating system. These are all possible, 
but they're different attacks. You know, if we're going to be using the top 20 attacks as a ruler to compare the strength of security posture at two different sites, we can't be changing the ruler every time we measure something. We can't be changing these attacks every time one of them is reliably defeated by the security posture. And so we conclude that stealing a password, nothing else, stealing the password and reusing it does not work against this 2013 classic security posture. How does it work against a unidirectional gateway? Again, the second security posture we have has a unidirectional gateway, a single device deployed at the ITOT interface. That security posture takes this attack off the table, but for a different reason. We all know that remote desktop and VPNs do not work through a unidirectional gateway. There is physically no way to communicate keystrokes through the one-way device. The one-way device is physically able to send information out of the control network nothing gets back in. And so stealing a password is not going to work. Now, again, you might say, just a minute, I know that remote access is possible through a unidirectional gateway. Remote screen view lets us watch screens on the inside that someone else is moving the mouse on. A secure bypass is a separate device that temporarily enables two-way connections. But remember both you know, the defensive posture and the attack scenario. The defensive posture said we have a single unidirectional gateway between the two networks. We don't have a separate secure bypass device. We can't use that in this scenario. And remote screen view, if we're going to use that to attack the inside network, we have to persuade someone on the inside network to do our bidding in terms of moving the mouse while we're watching the screen. That's a different attack scenario. All we've postulated here in terms of the attack scenario is stealing the password. And so again, for a different reason, the modern defensive posture reliably defeats a stolen password. So at this point, we have two defensive scenarios, the you know, 2013 classic software-based versus the unidirectional gateway scenario, and we have two attacks. The first of the attacks is not reliably defeated by either of the security postures. The second attack is reliably defeated by both security postures. We can visualize that scenario this way. The green bubbles are the attacks that are reliably defeated below the red line. The red bubbles are the attacks that are not reliably defeated above the red line. The red line is the design basis threat. Design basis threat is an idea from physical security. A design basis threat document describes the most capable attack that a physical site is required to defeat reliably. Um, I'm told these things are produced routinely for important government installations. They're classified, so I've never seen one, but you know what little is, is uh, said about them in, in public is that these things describe the most capable attack that's, that's defeated reliably and uh, you know, give some examples of attacks that may not be defeated reliably. So, for example, an embassy in a city where there are occasional demonstrations and you know rare riots, um, or you know even worse, terrorist attacks. Uh, such an embassy might have a design basis threat document that I imagine um, says something like, you know, the site shall reliably defeat an attack by a terrorist cell of no more than three people, armed with. Uh, submachine guns and hand grenades, but is not required to reliably defeat an attack by a squadron of tanks that is driving through the city blowing holes in buildings. So what we illustrate here is a cyber design basis threat separating the set of attacks that is defeated reliably from the set of attacks that is not so defeated. And both of these sets will grow over time and will give us a visual scorecard that will show us the strength of defensive posture in the face of this spectrum of 20 attacks. That's what I had for you for this attack. We have 18 more to go. Thank you for joining us at Waterfalls Industrial Security Institute. And hey, you listened to the end of the video. Do us a favor, give us a like and subscribe.